And back here, just getting started here with game three. Alcazar, Lauren Healy uh, has got no points yet, except for right here as that point went a little far. So Claren will start game four with a one-nothing advantage. I'm so that's what we like to see here. And so you know. Laura's subject will have the serve. And uh, Lauren, you know, we talked about senior day. Uh, it is tomorrow, you know, when you were a senior in high school, what kind of emotions did you feel and what do you think they're going to be feeling tomorrow? Oh my gosh, it is such an emotional time. You know, you spend your four years with the, you know, with the same group of girls. Um, specifically for my senior class, we had such a tight-knit group. Um, you know, we played together for all of our four years and it really makes it such a, spe such a special time, but really an emotional time knowing that's one of the last times you'll play um, together as a team. As Clarion again started game three with a 3 0 start. Now Clarion again returns the favor. A lot of deja vu today, like you talked about, Lauren. Oh, Clarion leads 3 0. And we just really need to take advantage of this lead that we have and keep the ball on our side of the court. And you're seeing Gannon coming out a little sloppy here in this set. Emily Stewart is another player to watch this, this entire game. She's been killing the ball. There's a good rally here for point number four. That went off the net. Gannon kept it alive. And that one's going to go out of bounds off of uh, Hannah Krenn, the point uh, recorded by Hannah Heater. Again, watching that, Gannon had a lot of passes that were really tight to the net, and that is not something you want to see that's hard for the setter to really play off the net and get the ball back up. So something Clarion took advantage of right there. Lower subject with the serve. And that kill attempt's going to go off of Seabold. Gannon will finally get on the board here in game four, make it four to one. As you see coming out number eight, uh, Taryn Graham. And Lynn Hibbard will have the serve. The sophomore uh, from Massachusetts. And she'll have the service error as Clarion takes a 5-1 advantage. And Clarion playing with the lead, which is obviously where they want to be, but especially in this game with a Gannon team that gets a little down themselves when they are behind. Absolutely, and with that, you really want to take advantage of this, um, of, you know, with our lead. You just got to keep chipping away and keep, you know, keep getting the points on our side. As number three, DeRozier, will come in and have the serve for Gannon. Checking out is number 10, Kayla Knickerbocker. Such a fun name to say. I know <laughs> we've been saying that all game, but... I kind of wish that was my last name. <laughs> I might change. I can do that. I'm, I'm old <laughs> enough to change it. There you go. As Heater, that one, a good attempt, but that one out of bounds. And Gannon will get the point. I think Heater's just trying to put a little too much on. That's the third or fourth one that she's had the error. Yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, Laura's subject with a beautiful back set, but Heater was just, just out. Like Great idea, said, though. Just got to snap your wrist down a little more, get, get a little more control under that ball. Yep, absolutely. So again with a nice set to Heater, and that time, Claren's going to get the point going off of Gannon. And Subject's pretty pumped up right now. Absolutely, the heart of the team right there, number four. Her and Stewart exchanging high fives as Seabold will have the service. Claren leads six to three. A nice dig, but that one's going to go out of bounds. Good effort by Stewart, but to no avail. Some of those really hard hit balls, it's kind of hard to control your pass, but you really just have to kind of absorb it and, you know, kind of control it to where you want to go. You can't just let it bounce right off your arms or it's going to get out of bounds like that. Yeah, exactly. Totally agree. Fiernowski will try again. That one kept in by DeRozier. And now Carver with the attempt and nobody home for Clary and Heater a little late on the dive. Yeah, they definitely hit the, the hole right there after it comes off the block. Gannon's coming back up a little bit. After a good 4-0 uh, start for Clarion, Gannon's cut the deficit to just one. Really, Alex, that's what makes this game so exciting. You know, the game is back and forth. There's not a definite winner ever. So it's, it's anyone's game at any time, and that's what makes volleyball such an exciting game to watch. It, it definitely is, uh, and Gannon's a quality team. I know Clarion's first in the PSAC West, Gannon in the fourth, but that PSAC West is so good with that top five. 
uh, they all play each other really, really close. Absolutely, competition is tight and really, I mean, you can't ask for anything more. You want to see these really good games. You don't want to see a blowout every game. Yeah, you and, know, and you're good. seeing a great game tonight. Absolutely. So a good rally here going as we're tied at six. Siebel tries to stay, Stewart's gonna, tr good effort all around, but no one home. Stewart got a piece of that, tried to throw it back, but Stewart. with all the clearing players rushing that way. Absolutely, and that's something that they do, that you do have to do well. You know, Stewart is sprinting to that ball, and you, you really, when she's going that far out, you know, you have to have some of the clearing players rush to her because she's gonna kind of pass it up to them. So they did a good job on that, but just didn't work out in their advantage this time. Again, has a seven to six lead. Heater with the kill attempt. That one blocked though, saved by Manley, but ultimately the point's gonna go to Gannon. And a timeout called by Clarion, Coach Mills. And again, you see Gannon with the lead. Now they have the smiles on. So, but kudos to Gannon after getting down early. Uh, you know, they, they just come, came off that game three loss. So, so good for them for keeping their heads in it and getting back that lead. Absolutely. And, and really, I mean, like I just said, you know, it's anyone's game at any point, you know. Whether Clarion be up, what, 16 one, let's say, you know, Gannon just has to chip away and every point matters. You know, you just got to keep having the ball back on your side of the court. And they have chipped away and they now have a, a two point lead here in game four. Again, just uh, as a quick recap in game one, uh, Clarion won 25 23 in a very back and forth game. Game two, uh, Gannon got off to a good start, but they, uh, they did take that set 25 23. And then in game three, another back and forth seesaw battle. Uh, with Clarion taking that one 25-22. So it's been really, really close throughout. Like you said, the competition in the PSAC West is as good as you're going to find basically anywhere uh, in, in, in Division Two. Absolutely, and that's what you want to see. You want to see competitive ball being played. And, and that's what makes the playoffs even better because then you have the best of the best oh, of absolutely. already really great teams. Such an exciting time. So again, you're looking playoffs possibly the week of November 18th. We'll be watching out for that when that happens. CUTV will definitely be there with the coverage. A subject will set up Biranowski. That one blocked by Gannon. That was number 16, Megan Wendell, that got the block and the point for the Golden Knights. And Clary needs to stop the bleeding on it, put a band-aid on it, and you know, take take advantage of it, get the serve receive up, and get the ball back on our side. As that block goes out of bounds off the heater kill, so CU will get the point. 9-7 to seven as Heater comes out and number 6 Lauren Magowski will come in. And that was uh, Seabold and Magowski that both went for the ball but neither of them could come up with it so Gannon with another point. But again, even seeing both of those two you know, both go for the ball is something that's so special about Clarion. You know, it's not just one person going after the ball. They're all going after it. And it's at the last second, you know, who can get the up. Yeah, just a good play by Gannon. You know, those, those, they're playing too, and, uh, and hats off to them. Oh, absolutely. As Kren will have the kill, that one's going to go long, and Gannon will get the point. Coach Darling a little frustrated, but understands that, that was the correct call. Biranowski with the serve for the Golden Eagles. Kren again. I believe Clarion um, hit the net right there, so giving Gannon the advantage once again. Good eye, Lauren, as Gannon takes a 11-8 advantage. She on the screen right now, number 16, Megan Wendell, ready with the serve. Short serve by and number 16. Subject knew what to do. Oh, she hit the net, didn't she? That's what happened, right? She, I think yeah. subject went right into the net, and, and you got to stay away from that. Look, look, look at her. She smiled. What did we get a She's shot laughing, of that? Yep. Uh, you think she just, she just won? She just got the point. You got to love it. Subject will try again with the assist, and that one's going to eventually get the point. Stewart with the kill. Another assist for subject. She has a rocket of an arm. Definitely another player to watch out for number five, Emily Stewart. She She's been on fire all game, really placing the ball, you know, just getting those kills, which is what Clarion needs to do. She should join the baseball team or something <laughs> with that. She really on. should. For softball, I mean, yeah, I guess I should say. Yeah, anything. 
And Krenn's going to send that one long as well. So a couple of, uh, of errors on Gannon's part. The second one, Krenn sent long. And, and on a play like that, it's not even a kill. You're just trying to send it over. You, you can't do that. Absolutely. You just need to get it. And that's, again, like kind of like with our serves. You, know, you just need to get the ball, and you don't necessarily have to rocket it over or you know, place it anywhere special. You just need to get it over. So Gannon lost the opportunity right there. When you talk about, like you said, controlling the controllables, I mean, that's one of those things. Absolutely. As you know, you just have to focus on what you're doing on your side of the net. You can focus on what Gannon's doing, just playing your game. And as you can see on the replay here, we had the um, the block with our front row. So Gannon leads 12-11 now. Kren with another kill took a little off of that one. Stewart again with that rocket arm of hers ties the game at 12. Absolutely, you know, Subject and Stewart are working so well together. I mean, all of the girls work well, well together. As you can see, the replay Subject sets it up to Stewart, and Stewart gets the kill right there. So a timeout on the floor. Coach Darling taking it smartly so with this game tied at 12. We'll take a minute timeout. So again, been a really close game, been really exciting to watch. Glad that you guys are tuning in. It's been such an exciting game, Alex. This is just... Again, why I just love volleyball, why I love watching it, why I love playing it. It's anyone's game at any point, and just watching the competition is just a blast. So is that what got you into the game in the beginning, or how did you get into volleyball uh, to begin with? Um, well, I started out by playing in middle school, and it's just such a fun game, such a fun atmosphere. Everyone gets so excited, and really, like I said, my senior class, um, I played with them all throughout middle school, all throughout high school, and it's just such a blast playing with such a... with you know, playing with your best friends, and that's what that's what is exciting about it. And I think it's what Clarion's doing again. You like to say that that you know tight knit group. You know, yep. everyone's their best friend. Uh, that's what makes his team oh, so special. Absolutely. So back here in play, it's Manly with the serve, all knotted up at 12, and a good block there by Shannon sent it right back Gannon's way as they take the lead. The freshman with the with the uh, block. So mainly again with the serve. As miss hit there on the kill at them, so an easy play for Clary and Subject will send it back over. Now Crane will just try to push it over. And Gannon will come away with the point. It looks like the refs are saying that Laura Subject hit into the net and she is she is saying that she did not. She is almost certain about that. It's hard to tell if she's angry, though. I, as she's laughing yeah. about it. <laughs> and miss hit there by Biranowski. Good save at them, but that's three hits. So Gannon will take the lead, 14-13. Again, Claren goes after every single ball, no matter if it's halfway up the bleachers, they're still running to it till last possible second to try and um, get the ball in play. But unfortunately, that one was a little... Uh, he couldn't corral that one, came up on her a little bit, and went out of bounds. Especially when you're that far back, it's hard to, you know, one arm it over that far. And into the game and bench as the players scurry away as Clarion ties things up at 14. This is what you like to see, really competitive ball being played here. Hopefully Subject can um, get the serve over in and... Um, yeah, no matter who ball. wins, hats off to both teams today. They've been hustling really Absolutely. well, and it's been back and forth, they're really, really... Uh, good contested game. Absolutely. And a miss hit there by Gannon's part. That one just died as it hit off the arms of number eight, Taryn Graham. You see on the replay right here. And, and you know, that's that's her job to get those passes up. And, you know, that's something that we need to take advantage of. Um, Clarion really needs to take advantage of that and, you know, get the ball back. Back row specialist not doing her job there. As Clarion takes the lead, but Gannon comes right back. It's a seesaw battle as it's been really all game long, all tied up at 15. And it gets right off of the block from number 10, Kelly Shannon. Just hits right off her block and right out of bounds. So hopefully we can take advantage of this coming up. Emily Carver, the 6'2 junior, checking in for Gannon. Subject, nice block there by Gannon. Subject will set up again to Shannon. And then again, Subject and Shannon really having that chemistry there by playing the um, the short the short setup, and it seems to be working for them, um, catching Gannon a little off guard. And Gannon, though, not caught off guard on that point overall as they get the point and are up by one. Oh. 
as Heater will get the point that went off the hands of Carver. That was uh, the 6-1 Heater versus the 6-2 Carver, and Heater won that battle. Absolutely, Alex. As you see on the replay, Laura Subject back sets it to Heater, and Heater just turns on that ball and gets the kill right there. So Stewart will have the serve. Good dig by Kren. Again, and will just harmlessly send it over. Good dive attempt by Subject. And miscommunication there. I don't think anyone called for it. That is something that is killing Gannon right now. Their miscommunication in the back row. And really, once they're down, you know, they seem to stay down. They can't necessarily pick themselves back up, which is something Clarion, you know, they do well and they continue to do that. You got to battle through that adversity, and that's why Clarion's 28 and 2. Such an impressive record for Clarion. Yes, I think it's the second or third best in school history and they've been playing volleyball for some time as they get the uh, 17th point, excuse me, 18th point of game four. Again, we're getting close to those 20s, Alex. That's the magic number right there. Hopefully we can get to 21st and take advantage of that. Stewart and Clarion looking for 19 and all had a chance to get it though. Gannon keeps it alive. Good block by Heater. Seaball with the pass, setting up Heater with the kill. Good job by Gannon. And a thunderous block, though the point does go to Gannon out of bounds, but good try by Heater. Check it out on the replay here. Heater puts her hands up, but that one does go out of bounds, so the point does go to Gannon. Gannon's trailing one point here. DeRosier's with the serve. Bernas will just have to send that one over. And that one went off of the hand of, I think, Piranowski. So Gannon has now tied it up. Again, this is where it's so vital for Clarion to have perfect service. You know, they need to stay consistent with their passes and send that perfect pass to subject to get the ball back and stay consistent. As Siebel does have a nice pass to subject. And it's going to set up the kill attempt. And the point will go to Clarion. So like you said, that serve received, you know, you have a good pass, set the tone early in that point, and Clarence able to walk away with one. Absolutely, that's such an important thing, and I know that they're, that's something that every volleyball team needs to practice every single day in their practice, because without serve received, you know, you really don't have anything. Clarion trying to look for that magic 20. Gannon kept it alive. Block attempt, Heater keep, kept it up. Now Clarion has to send it over, and they do. Gannon with a chance to reset on offense. Carver with the kill attempt, and she will score, get the point, all tied up at 20. Similar to us, um, Gannon's really taking advantage of the back set from their setter to, for the hitter to really you know, come around on that and hit it. Um, Heater does an excellent job of doing that, and Gannon also is also taking advantage of that as well. So subject, good pass there. Heater will set up for the kill attempt. But that was DeRosier that got a piece of it. Miscommunication though, Clarion's able to send it back over. Clarion kind of playing on their heels on this point. Who's gonna get the 21st? Excellent rally, back and forth we go. They know it's an important point. Stewart will try again. Again saved by Gannon. And that one into the net. Gannon, all that work, and it's all for none as DeRosier sent it into the net. In Here it is on the replay. At the, you caught the very tail end of that. The attack right into the net, and Clarion gets that cr uh, critical 20th and that point. Is really something Clarion needs to take advantage of right now. You know, Gannon's feeling a little bit down. You know, all of that hard work for uh, Gannon to just hit into the net. We need to take advantage of that. If Clarion wins this match in the game, that could be the reason why. Though Gannon, no, the point's going to go to Clarion. Gannon, upset about that. They thought it was theirs. They thought it hit the line. Ref saw otherwise. Clarion now in control. And a good idea to call a timeout and calm Gannon down because they were not happy with that last Absolutely, call. Absolutely, Alex. I don't know if we have a replay of that. But uh, a tough call to make, but I think it was the right call. So Clarion leads 21-19 here in this one-minute timeout. 
And just a, a quick look ahead, like I said, tomorrow Clarion will be playing Mercyhurst on Senior Day. And for Gannon, tomorrow they'll be taking on IUP at 5 o'clock at IUP. Just a quick look at the PSAC West standings. Like I said, top of the broadcast, Clarion and Cow battling it out. Cow is in action tonight, don't have a score for them yet. But both 17-1 in conference play, playing with a better overall record. But the tiebreaker for that, if conference record is the same, is number of sets lost. So Clarion does have a... Uh, at least one uh, set that they've lost tonight. Seton Hill in third place, who Clarion beat 3-1 last Friday. Seton Hill at 12-6 and six in conference, 24-8 and eight overall. And at number four is Gannon, at, uh, like I said, 16-11 overall and 11-7 and seven in PSAC West play. And Mar Magowski is about to serve for Clarion. As Carver will send that over, blocked by Seabolt. And right in the middle, you know, all game long, Clarion's back line wasn't pinching up, getting in that donut, and this time Clarion's able to do it. Absolutely, they're really taking advantage of that. I think the ball just tipped right over the front row and, you know, tipped right into their donut. Just three more points for Clarion. Good pass, good set for subject, and they're gonna get the point as Clarion finishes off that point, 23-19. And Clarion's pumped up. It's, they got the crowd on their feet for hopefully the last couple points here of the game. Just two to go for the Golden Eagles. They look to go to 29-2. and two. Began's been fighting them tooth and nail the whole way. That one's going to go long, and everyone's pumped up. One more point for Clarion. Gannon just giving Clarion that point by hitting it out. Another error on Gannon's part. It's been a bit of a sloppy game for the Gold Knights. A chance to win for Clarion. It's Migowski will have the serve. Crowd the on their is feet. pumped up right now. Read my mind, Lauren. 24-19. And that will be the game. Clarion knocks off Gannon. 25-19 in this game. 3-1 for the match as they will advance to 29-2. There's the match point. Clarion advances 29-2 overall, 18-1 in conference play. A critical, critical victory for Clarion. Alex, this was just such a fun game to watch. It was so competitive throughout the entire game. You know, Gannon taking that, um, the game two right there, you know, keeping everyone on their feet, you know, keeping the crowd on their feet, keeping the, uh, um, the fans on their feet and Really, as you can see, Clarion celebrating their win here. As they always do, thanking the fans. Uh, just a great game today for Clarion. Is that guy's gonna, I guess, find some clothes here at some point? <laughs> he but seems to be the only one that stuck <laughs> around there from the swim team. Hey, credit to him. Credit Absolutely. to him. Absolutely appreciate that. As we wrap things up. Uh, Lauren, any final thoughts on this contest again? Clarion pulling out the victory. Alex, this is just such a vital game, and these last few games are just so important. You know, we have Gannon today, Mercyhurst on Saturday, and then next weekend, um, Clarion is away at Edinburgh and away at Slippery Rock, so every single game is so important. It's really important for Clarion to just stay important, or to stay on the game, and that's what they're doing here. Well, that's all the time we have today for Lauren Healy and Alex Gazora. Again, Clarion comes out on top, 3-1. to one. Have a great night, Clarion.